Okay, we have one more company in this round, but we're going to be back tomorrow with two more rounds and ten more companies. So, presenting from San Francisco, California, we have Stack. Presenting for Stack is Nikki Bar <laughs> Barnussi, founder and CEO, and Victoria and Lucy L Yang. Come on out. Eight out of 10 of us have sent cash to a friend using a peer-to-peer -peer payment service. That's over 150 million users transacting 1.2 trillion just this year alone. And two thirds of those users have cash balances in their app. But who really benefits from those cash balances? Well, with inflation hitting a 40-year high of 9.1% in June, if you left idle cash in there, you just took a cut. And it's those same peer-to-peer -peer apps that are benefiting from cash balances and earning a return, leaving nothing behind for their users. But it doesn't have to be that way. Millennials, Gen Z, all of us want to earn and grow our wealth, but sometimes just lack the resources, time, or energy, or resources to invest. So that's why we have built an alternative. What if your investment journey could start with something so simple as a peer-to-peer -peer payback? Your roommate paying you back rent in Apple stock. Your burrito lunch date paying you back in Chipotle stock. What if peer-to-peer -peer paybacks wasn't just a way to settle tabs, but was a way to actually build generational wealth? Coming from an investment background at KKR and McKinsey, I've had experience overseeing an $800 million portfolio. My co-founding team brings experience to the table from companies like Coinbase, Goldman Sachs, and even the White House. Introducing Stax, the first peer-to-peer -peer payment designed to generate wealth with every single transaction. Please move to demo. So I went out to dinner with Lucy in the Marina District last night, and we got this delicious pasta. And she covered the bill, so I want to pay her back. I go into her profile page, and I hit pay or request. I can enter an amount and a description, and I hit pay. Now here, her top five favorite stocks pop up, and I can choose whatever I want to pay her in. So let's go ahead and choose Tesla and hit next. Confirm. And it's as easy as that. I just contributed to her long-term wealth goals just by going out to dinner with her. I can also request stock in the same manner. So I go to Lucy's page, I hit a dollar amount, I put in a comment, and I hit request. And in that same way, my top five favorite stocks pop up and I can choose what I'd like to get paid in. Please move back to deck. Before, sending stock was extremely difficult. The sender paid taxes, filled out paperwork, there were high fees and tons of delays. It wasn't for the everyday investor, and there were so many friction points. But at Stax, we built a fast, simple, and secure way to send stock, and we're making it the new norm and bringing it mainstream. When I send Lucy stock, it comes out of my account as cash and enters her account as cash on the back end. It only converts to stock once she clicks accept in her notifications tab. So let me show you how that's done. Please move to demo. So Lucy, Lucy goes into her notifications tab and she sees a transaction from me in there. She can decline or accept. So let's go ahead and click accept. She has a few options in here. She can accept the stock as is, she can switch the stock to another one of her favorites, or she can accept it as cash. So let's go ahead and accept the Tesla stock. In this very moment, the cash on the back end converts to stock and starts investing for her. Let's just say one morning Lucy wakes up and she decides, oh, Tesla is a little too volatile for me. I'm gonna go ahead and choose to accept it as cash, which is a great alternative for us on our platform. Stacks is also social, and we make all portfolios and trades and transactions public, so you can like and comment 
on various transactions, and this is truly to engage in conversation about investing in your community. The ultimate goal here is to make investing less lonely, and we create data transparency that other platforms conceal and close off to their users. And by giving this power of data back to the users, we are truly democratizing investing. Back to deck. So not only is Stack super fun in ways that you can grow your own wealth, but you can contribute to your peers' wealth and actually see it grow as well. So at Stacks, we're thinking of other ways to grow people's wealth, and we go beyond just peer-to-peer -peer payments. Imagine a driver accepting shares of stock as they ride around via their rideshare app, or imagine a bride and groom accepting shares of stock as gifts via their registry service. Even businesses will be able to plug into Stacks. And unlike other P2P apps like Venmo, we've got you covered. We cover up to 250k of user cash balances and 500k of portfolio investments using our brokerage partner Alpaca, and this is to make sure that our users feel 100% safe and confident when investing with us long term. Stacks dramatically changes the way people pay and invest by allowing anyone to turn every payment into an investment. By taking the habit that already exists of peer-to-peer -peer payments and supercharging it with the ability to invest, we're bringing a whole new group of individuals into the markets and creating new ways that they can access it. So, businesses, if you're interested in incorporating investments into your payments platform, contact us at hello@stacksapp.com. And for everyone else, scan using the QR code and download us today on the iOS App Store. With the exclusive code Stacks TechCrunch and get started investing today. Join us as we create limitless value with every single transaction. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nikki. Dave, can we start with you? Yeah. Can you just talk a little bit about the setup? You mentioned Alpaca is your partner, and so uh, you need to get cash into to Stacks, and then you. Need to maybe set up a brokerage account. If you can talk just a little bit about getting set up on your product. Yeah, definitely. So when you're getting set up with Stacks,、um, we're like any other brokerage requires us to verify your identity,、uh, which goes through the KYC or know your customer process. So in that sense, you're kind of creating your own Alpaca account or a brokerage account、uh, through Stacks, and that、uh, allows you to also trade on our platform. So you can buy, sell, as well as send and receive stocks. I have a kind of a Uh, related question. Thanks, guys. This is great.、Um, Anne asked another contestant, or、uh, about kind of network effects. And there were two points in here that I'm sort of struggling to get my head around. One is、um, there's like a bit of chicken and egg, which you sort of have to have stocks to be able to pay someone, and someone can also choose to reject getting the stocks. So how do you think about creating this initial sort of liquidity in this payment app? Like, who are your early users? Um, that are creating that network effect. Yeah, and you make a really great point.、Uh, and what we've done right now is that we allow any user. You don't have to own a specific stock to be able to send it. So in our process, you're actually sending cash from one user's account to another. And when the other the recipient accepts the cash, it converts it to stock. So we're basically cutting that that journey when you're thinking about investing、uh, and bringing it down to like immediate. So you guys are making the purchase. Yes, on the back end, the cash converts to stock once you click accept. So it's up to the receiver, and the power is in the receiver's hand to and are you, change. Are you taking、stock. a cut on the transaction, or what? Currently, we do not. Yeah. Okay. So how do you make money? Yeah, we're really thinking about different ways of profitability. Currently, we're thinking about acquisition. So our main goal is to get as many users on the app, find value,、um, and then in other ways think about how to make money from that. Yeah. So I think、uh, long-term goals, we do think about transaction costs or、um, other ways of making money in terms of like ACH and things like that. Yeah. And on the back end, there is a way to do it transparently. Transparency to to the PFOF model, which is payment for order flow. It's a pretty valid model in terms of a lot of brokerages. They use that, except they take advantage of the user funds and they don't do the correct spread between the bid and the ask, and so they take more than they they should. So that's Robinhood and all these other platforms.、Yeah. We want to be extremely transparent to our users on how much we're taking on the back end, and be com completely ethical about that. So that's what makes us really different. Stax is really about transparency and giving the the power back to the user. So we want to make sure. Recruiting revenue in an ethical way, unlike other brokerages. Thanks. 
Look. Yeah, I'm thinking about um, what obviously pops up for everybody's Venmo and Acorns that I have. And I'm thinking about Venmo. I, I have a lot of movement in that app mm -hmm. every day, right? I look at my balance. I'm like, there's money in there. Then I look at who I owe, pay, 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 or I send it to back to my bank account, right? So I'm not incentivized to keep money, right, on the app. And then when I think about Acorns, the automation setup, it's pulling from my checking account every so often. It's going into the funds. So what do you anticipate is going to be the user behavior on this app? given what people are already used to when it comes to holding stock and not just, you know, um, anyway, you get the question. Yeah, definitely. I think um, what we really wanted to do is build out a whole banking ecosystem, and it starts with peer-to-peer -peer payments. So when we think about banking ecosystem, you have your company you bank with, like your checking or savings account, we kind of integrate that into Stacks as well as your investment platform. So we're kind of feeding our new users, young people who are getting started investing or kind of like hesitant about investing, dipping into their feet into investing and then bringing them into our whole ecosystem of products. So we're eventually building out a platform where we hope to, you know, bring users and give them value in many ways. So that includes like any interest from your banking, from the cash you have with Stacks as well as your investments growing over time. Yeah, and what you said there is like, key in terms of network effect. Uh, what we bring to the table is very different in terms of other brokerage platforms in terms of the social component. So we see a lot of user engagement in the social side of things and how they like to contribute to their friends' wealth or comment or like or engage in uh, community conversations. Great. Hello? Yeah, uh, very clever, interesting. Couple of questions. The first question is just at a high level, what's your policy on, on data? Who owns it? Who's it shared with? And then the, is it Alpaca, is that the? Correct. Are they, second question, are they purely back office without any customer facing activity? Yeah, you make a really point. So we use Alpaca, which is our brokerage partner. Uh, they handle all of the KYC processing, our users' information, and so we kind of use them to build out the brokerage and the compliance side of a product. Um, and they've worked with many other companies before in terms of um, companies that are going into the investing space, and so we really trust them as a partner. And then your policy on data usage, who's owning it, who's using it? Yeah, great question. So we basically don't store all of our information, user information, to our database. Um, we store some information such as like your username, passwords, and things like that, but we use a, um, a third-party API to store our information. Yeah, and our ultimate goal here is to become our own brokerage, so we would be eventually moving off Alpaca and um, owning all that data and building out stacks. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Last Thank question you. to Ann. Why do you think this is going to be a generational app for Gen Z? It's a good question. So the way that Gen Z moves and thinks is very differently. The attention span is different. If you're looking at Gen Z, for example, they're not going to buy a pair of jeans off of an ad on TV. They're going to buy a pair of jeans off TikTok of their favorite influencer wearing it and someone they can relate to and they trust. So the way that they think is very different, and Stacks caters to this group of people because you're following um, otherwise people who wouldn't talk about financial decisions or investing, it's all transparent. And you can follow influencers who are making trades that you trust and you can mimic those trades and understand what they're doing with their finances. So instead of reading CNBC, CNBC or like Fox News or articles about stocks, they prefer peer-to-peer uh, information and that aspect of it is, is really the key component of Gen Z right there. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Give them a round of applause. <laughs>